Hello, my name is Chasey Poo. I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people have been asking on my Tumblr recently and on my YouTube, and I thought, why not? And it's basically the topic of how to bind properly. So before I had top surgery, I binded for about four, four or five years, and I went through a whole bunch of different binders and experiences, and ho. Oh, I have some stories for you and I really want to talk about this because I feel like there's a lot of mm, misconceptions about how to bind properly and if you bind properly is it still good for you. So I just kind of want to like debunk some of these myths and just really talk about the proper way to bind. Now first of all you should know that no matter how you bind, um, it's always going to be bad for you. Uh, no matter what, just think about what it's doing to your body. You're wearing something that is like a compression shirt or that's very tightening around your rib area so that you can bind your chest down, um, it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to make you breathe like that, <laughs> breathe, breathe less, you, you really learn to control your breathing less, and, um, actually, you, you, you learn to control your breathing more because you have to breathe less, because if you take big breaths, it does really hurt, um, so I want to talk about maybe the safest way to bind, so that people can actually, feel like they're not gonna die when they put on a binder. So of course, let's talk about the don'ts before the do's. Never wear an ace bandage. Never wear tape. Never, never, never. If you don't have money at all to buy a binder, please, there are binder giveaways all the time on YouTube and on Tumblr. There's binder exchange programs. You can also buy binders online and they do take PayPal, so you don't need a credit card. Honestly, Ace bandage is the worst thing that you can use. The reason why is because ace bandages stretch out and when you put them on your, let's say on your rib area right here, when you put them on and then you tighten it, you don't realize how, t how tight it is after you actually done and then you sit there for 15 minutes and then you realize, oh my god, it's actually constricting me more because that's what ace bandages are designed to do. So that's really not fun to have it constrict you more and more and more to the point where you can't really breathe. I was one of these people who wore ace bandages. I wore two ace bandages because I didn't have a binder and um, I only wore it around the house and I still, it was ridiculous. And there's no safe way to use ace bandages even if you think you're not doing it tight enough. Um, you are, it's gonna be tight and you're not gonna be bound properly if you actually don't do it tight. So there's no win-win, no, it's lose, 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 lose. So no ace bandages, absolutely no tape, oh my god. Even if you wear a shirt and then you wear tape over the shirt to bind it down, it's not good. Tape does not expand well, it's not a compression shirt, it's just plastic that sticks and it's gonna stay there and if you need to move around it's not gonna move with you so I would really recommend against those two things. Now the binders that I used were the uh, Underworks white tri top medium so if you know my body type because you've seen pictures of me or you watch my videos obsessively you know that I'm a medium size I guess so I'm gonna get up for you guys so you know this is me this is a medium shirt from H&M and so I wore a medium. My first binder ever was a long double front compression, um, uh, large, and that did not bind me properly. So I went for a medium. It is a bit tight and it's hard to get into. As you can see, it, it grew about this much more and it was a lot more white, <laughs> but uh, obviously I, I used it a lot before I had surgery. And uh, yeah, so this is the, the binder that I used and um, it hurts when you put it on, and it hurts because it's going to compress you, and if you've never put on a binder before, don't expect, I mean, you can't expect it to bind you 100%, right? Um, that's the misconception about binders, but when you put it on, it, it's, it is going to, it is going to feel strange, because you have to really focus on your breathing, and you have to do this kind of, like, separation, or else you're going to look like you've got a uniboob, which is not fun. If you have a medium binder and you're my size, um, the medium binders are a great fit for me, but the armpit area did uh, irritate me in the first two days where I did bleed a little bit, which is really not fun and not recommended, but honestly, large did not fit me, so I dealt with it for like the couple of days that I did have some irritation. So that, for me, is the best binder recommendation I can give. There are so many different binder companies out there. There's like Tea Kingdom and there's a whole other bunch that you can take, but I'm saying that this is the binder that I wore, and if you want a proper binder, these are the binders that you can buy. 
uh, their Underworks binder. The Underworks has a new FTM like section. It's like F2M binder Underworks or something like that. I'll just link it down there if you want to look at those binders. So what does binding do? Binding flattens out your chest, but it also changes the elasticity in your chest. And that sucks. Uh, because elasticity in your chest and in your skin is very important when you're going to have top surgery. And I'm talking about people who want top surgery. Um, when you when you wear a binder, it's going to... It's not going to make you saggy, but it's going to make you saggy, you know? Like, if you bind for a long time, like... Like, honestly, I'll show you a comparison. Like, my boobs might have been, like, down to here, like, my nips, down to here, before binding, and then after binding, I'm not even kidding, they were, like, down to here. So it does really flatten it out, and that does... Um, take into consideration that I was on T and the fat redistributed a little bit. My my boobs were still like the same size, maybe just a little bit smaller because of the fat redistribution, but they were saggier. And that you really have to take a look at the elasticity because if you plan on having top surgery, your results are going to be different if you have lack of elasticity in your chest area. Um, I've seen some 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 results of top surgery from improper from improper whatever from from people not properly binding and it hurts me to see to see those results because it sucks that these people did not have enough money uh, for a binder to bind properly or the proper resources to know that it's bad to bind like that but the results are significantly different and they wouldn't look um, uh, as the ones that you've seen like on the websites of your top surgeon or anything like that um, that's why it is recommended that you do get top surgery um, and you don't bind for over you know an extended period of time I from my personal opinion, I think that people should have top surgery whenever they want. Um, but the elasticity for me really started changing after like three and a half, four years of binding. And I really noticed that I got these like weird stretch marks and that my skin was more like flappy and I could just like pick it up. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's time for me to get top surgery. And I'm just going to show you a little piece right over here. If you see my scars right here they're they're great like it's it's a great great scar <laughs> um but if you look at the actual incision there are some um some points in my skin that are not the same as like here so this part of my skin is and it's obviously i had top surgery there but the elasticity is like completely different and it was like that before i had top surgery and um, probably eventually it'll change, but for now, it's it, that's just how it is, and you just gotta deal with it, right? I would recommend to not wear a binder more than 12 hours a day. I didn't follow this rule, and I regret it. Um, I couldn't follow this rule. The only reason why I couldn't follow it is because I was out of the house more than 16 hours a day. So I would wake up, I wouldn't put my binder on right away, I'd take a shower, then I, this, like right before I would leave the house, I would get dressed and put my binder on, and then I would leave. The second I would go home, I would take, I would rip off my binder. Like, oh. So that for me was the perfect amount of time um, that I could get, that I could deal with. I couldn't. Oh man, never wear your binder to sleep. I did that once um, because I I went like to Scotland and I it was like a 36 hour trip from like Montreal to New York to New York to whatever, and I wore my binder for 36 hours and it was the most painful thing in the entire world when I had to take that off and I could breathe like I've never breathed before. And I'm not being dramatic, I literally mean that. It was ridiculous how much pain I was in because I binded for so long. So please do not sleep with your binders, especially when you're sleeping, your body goes into like relaxation and it needs to be able to have deeper breaths. If you've realized when other people are sleeping, they do snore and they do like, they do breathe heavier. Some people breathe less, it's dangerous. It, especially if you're in that, that sleep cycle, I don't really know anything about sleep. But that sleep cycle, when you're breathing less, and you have a binder on, uh, oh, I don't even want to go there, but I mean, you could only imagine what could actually happen um, if you're breathing less and your binder's constricting your ribs, and then you stop breathing. The really important thing also about this 12-hour rule is because you don't want your ribs um, to cave in, and you don't want your ribs to be bruised. And I know that sounds really scary or dramatic, but I, I've seen it happen, and it's really sad. Um, I've seen a couple of people break one rib and what do you do? You can't bind for a couple of months after that because you need your rib to heal or else your, your rib's gonna be slanted and it's not gonna heal properly and then your, your chest isn't gonna be flat, it's gonna be like with a ridge, which is fine. I mean, if that's what you want, but um, it's really not recommended. It can also affect your lungs, obviously, because your ribs are very close to your lungs. If your ribs start 
Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, it's going to affect your lungs, and that's something that you really, really don't want to deal with because you can only imagine how painful that is. And the dysphoria that you get after because you can't bind, it's really worth it to just bind properly now so that you don't have to deal um, with that stuff. As for swimming, um, you can bind while you swim. While you swam. I used a black tri-top binder to swim because it was like an old one and black tri-top binders are more, they have a more elastic feel. And um, for me, this was a great binder to swim in. It's not too tight. I actually did work out with this binder as well, which I do recommend working out in a different binder that's maybe slightly more uh, flexible, like the black one, or uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Nobody cares if you have bumps on your t-shirt when you're working out. People might think it's pecs, whatever. It's you at the gym who cares about other people. This way you allow your body to breathe properly, although it did hurt sometimes and I did have some chest pains that kind of feel like heartburn, but worse. Uh, it's like cartilage pain. I don't know how to explain it. Um, this binder is a lot better than this binder to work out in for me because this binder was a lot tighter than this one. And this one, like I said, allowed me space to breathe and I was able to um, to, to, to wash it after or not have to wear it outside of the gym or the swimming pool because I could just switch into my old my, my like binder that is dry. Um, so that was absolutely great. It's not really recommended to wear a binder working out, but I'm going to tell you that if you have dysphoria like I did, you're not going to just wear a sports bra or a bra to the gym or nothing. Um, so you, you can wear a binder, but like I said, make sure the binder is not as tight as your normal binder. And if you want a sports bra, you can. Like, honestly, if I still had my sports bra and I would go to the gym, I would have probably worn it, but no. One last thing about how to bind properly, don't forget to wash your binder. That's something I forgot to do a lot. I would wash it like once every three months, um, because I didn't want it to like change, because it does change in like texture, but that's fine because it's, 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 it's more broken into, I guess. And um, it smells, even after you wash it, it smells. So like use a lot of that like laundry stuff that makes your smell, not, not laundry detergent, that like, I don't know what's called, a softener. And then like, don't put it in the dryer, obviously, just uh, leave it out on your chair to dry. Don't hang it either, because it goes all squiggly. Um, I mean, that, that's like to a sweat color. You probably can't see, but my binder has this thing that says like, don't eat it, but like, there you go. I don't know. This is me, I'm just talking about my binder that I had. It feels so weird to hold this in my hand because 10 months ago I used to wear this every single fucking day. I don't want to look at it anymore. It's making me feel weird. Anyways, that's it. If you have any questions about binding, please let me know. If you have any video topics for me, I will do them for you. And that's all I got for you and I love you. Boo!